Blessings, beloveds. Welcome back, Anastasia, Cosmic Astrologer. Thanks so much for tuning in, and thank you to any newcomers and new subscribers as well. Okay, so let's talk about the full moon in Pisces, which is coming up on the 1st or 2nd of September, depending on whether you are in the southern or northern hemisphere. So for us in the southern hemisphere, it will be on the 2nd of September. For most of my viewers, I know most of you are on the other side, it will be on the 1st of September. And I'll bring up the chart in a moment, and we'll just uh, have a look at some of the features of the chart. The thing that uh, really strikes me about this full moon in Pisces there's several things actually, but what one thing to consider is, well, first of all, always look at where the full moon lands in your birth chart, right? Because that's clearly going to be the domain, the area of life that's going to be illuminated and highlighted during this particular full moon. Also, in addition to that, have a look at where the new moon in Pisces earlier this year, which was around uh, February, towards the end of February, we had a new moon in Pisces, right? So that was the beginning of how this full moon has cycled, right, through the year, you could say, through half of the year. So it's been through, obviously, all these other new moons and full moons. But it's it's really about the seed that was kind of planted um, during the time of February. If you can think back to that time, what was going on, it might just give you some clues around what's really uh, showing up for you at the moment relative to the full moon. So the full moon is always the sun and moon directly opposite each other. Hence, you know, um, the the moon is receiving the light from the sun, right? So we've got the two, the two bodies of light, as they are called, directly opposite each other, which is why we have the sun in Virgo and the moon in Pisces, right? That's That's the polarity. Every time you get a full moon, it's always the signs in the zodiac that are in a polarity with each other. Um, the interesting thing is uh, we've got transiting Neptune in Pisces, right? Which is, you know, it's, it's, I feel it's really connected to this full moon. A, because Neptune is the ruler of Pisces. And whilst it's not in really close proximity, it's about eight or nine degrees away. Some might say that's too wide. But it's not too wide because Neptune is the ruler of Pisces and this full moon is in Pisces. So Neptune is squaring the transiting nodes that are in Sagittarius and Gemini. And so that started really technically or not technically, but in terms of range of frequency, we could say really that that started in around May or June this year. Okay, so that's a building process that's unfolding and we're not going to see the end of that until January 2021 and that's a very very important collective transit relative to the nodes and transiting Neptune right because the transiting nodes only recently um, transitioned you know out of Cancer Capricorn into Sag and Gemini so this full moon is is you could say is contained within that frequency of what transiting Neptune is emitting to the nodes, the transiting nodes at the moment. And we can apply that to our own personal life relative to where the full moon is transiting in our own chart. We can also look back at the new moon in Pisces earlier this year. We can look at where transiting Neptune is in our chart. And we can also look at where the transiting nodes are, and this creates a, quite a big sort of narrative for us individually, and it certainly creates one collectively relative to the current state of affairs that have really been active, you know, virtually since the beginning of this year, and we are still in them. And there seems to be um, no end in sight, as it were, right? So we, we're still in quite troubling times. There's no question about that. The, the matters of resolution moving forward relative to current events in terms of this COVID-19 situation and what's going to truly evolve out of this is yet to be seen, but it is also... Uh, more clearly understood through the larger cycles, such as Saturn, Pluto, 
Jupiter, you know, all in Capricorn, the Saturn-Pluto conjunction. And just one point about the Saturn-Pluto conjunction. I think um, I was chatting with my mentor just the other day and we were thinking about this and one of the considerations that we were discussing was that the Saturn-Pluto conjunction, which occurs every 33 years, when it happened, uh, when it first sort of begun uh, earlier this year, it's, it's a conjunction, right? So a conjunction is two bodies coming together, which means in terms of phases, like the, the moon has, you know, eight phases, okay? The, the planets, when they are forming aspects to each other, they too are in a particular phase, whether it's a new phase, uh, a first quarter square phase, a full moon phase, as it were, and so forth. So the concept of phases exists in the nature of the cycles of all the planets. So with Saturn and Pluto forming a conjunction, that is actually the birth, right, of the energy of those two planets. And so realistically, then, we are looking at something that has been born through the containment and energy of Saturn, Pluto in Capricorn, okay? And what's been born is is just now. We, we are at the beginning of that. So we're not going to see the full extent of what this will truly bring into our sphere of consciousness and our everyday living situations for really another 30 years. So we're looking at a cycle that's been born, that's set the tone for certain things over a 30 year period. It's a, it's a huge cycle. That's why we cannot possibly know exactly um, what's to come in the very near future. See a conjunction, and I've said this before, and keep this in mind just with your own birth chart, a conjunction, which is two bodies coming together side by side. Now, there are two different types of conjunctions. There's a, an Aries conjunction and a Pisces conjunction. So the Aries conjunction is when the two planets are applying and they come exactly together. That's an Aries conjunction. It's a new beginning. And the Pisces conjunction, which is a balsamic conjunction is that the two bodies have already come together and the faster one is actually starting to move away right so that's the pisces balsamic conjunction and they both mean and uh, manifest in very different ways they mean different things even though it's a conjunction right so yeah we just i just think uh it's important to mention that because at the moment you know really um it it feels that you know there's there's just mass confusion and and it's you know totally understandable given the nature of form at the moment which is totally chaotic right so when we look at this um full moon in pisces it's it's carrying the the vibration of the transiting Neptune squaring the nodes, which is pointing us to a number of different things. But one thing it's pointing us towards is the need to surrender to, you can call it a new timeline, you can call it a new reality, you can call it a new way of life. Those those terms virtually mean the same thing anyway. So in other words, we are, we are really stepping into a new reality. And with Neptune, one of the major things that is experienced from the personality level with Neptune is disappointment, right? See, Neptune <clears throat> is the truth, the ultimate truth, oneness, source, creation to all things. To, to be a conduit of that truth and to transmit it through 100% in its purity 
is it's it's I wouldn't say it's impossible, but it's it's not what we do in the human form because we have an ego and a personality which creates the form of you know your physical body, your identity, where you live, what you do, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Those forms that shape your perspective of your reality create different you know perceptions, different beliefs. Um, different understandings and so forth and the truth is always there in Neptune because Neptune is the truth but to, to transmit that and bring that through in its purest form in this third dimension reality at least is very tricky so it kind of gets filtered through in bits and pieces right and so we have moments or experiences or little realizations or little pockets of truth that come sort of flying in if you like into our consciousness when we are working on that level especially um, which starts to enable us to create greater integration towards our own wholeness which is divine but the journey uh, throughout that process because of the nature of form and reality doesn't make it such that we, we just, you know, we just stand here and we just transmit pure consciousness, truth, source creation to all things and, and just become that as it were overnight, because we are here to actually experience a journey of evolution anyway. And that evolutionary journey is coming through the form matter, 3d reality, Saturn, so we have to take on different forms in order to have different experiences in order to grow in different ways, right? So when it comes to the full moon, particularly because of the, the current state of affairs, we're really faced with probably a lot of disillusionment and a lot of disappointment as well relative to what we thought reality was about our life was about the world was about so you know dreams come crashing down for a lot of people on the other hand you know people who are um you know more uh, more aligned uh, more um uh, more able to access with their intuition um seeking more you know the the spiritual connections and understandings to have a bigger cosmological view that doesn't mean that it makes the process easy by the way but it does point to having um, some faith and also having some meaning in the chaos because we're talking about Virgo Pisces the Sun and the moon Sun in Virgo moon in Pisces that polarity means a lot of different things, but one thing it means is chaos and order. And Virgo is the order and Pisces is the chaos. And they're sort of interchangeable because um, Pisces can be order as well and Virgo can be chaos. You know, if you see, I've seen this many times, I've got um, close people in my life who are Virgos. Uh, you can look at the life of a Virgo sun sign for instance right and in certain streams of their life their their life is very what i say virgonized organized right it's very virgo <laughs> um and then so they you know they'll, they'll have a, a very particular structure and order and way of doing things and constantly trying to improve on whatever that is you know whether it's um personally or professionally right and then there'll be another stream in their life which is totally chaotic which is the shadow right it's pisces so the the thing about virgo is uh what it what it feels at a deep level coming sort of emanating into its field into its consciousness into the psychic body is this it's the shadow Pisces, which can feel like an existential void to Virgo because Virgo needs to be useful. It needs to be doing something all the time. 
so it feels. And so to suddenly stop and surrender to nothing, which is Pisces, is, is, a, is the shadow. You know, it's very difficult to do. For all of us, we all have a shadow side and our shadow side is very difficult to work with, right? Um, that doesn't mean that we can't work with it, but it is very, very challenging. And, and our shadow sort of haunts us wherever we are, as it were. So this full moon in Pisces is, is, is really confronting us with the, the stark sort of reality, as it were, that reality is not what we thought and we are moving into a brand new reality. But it's very difficult to accept that, to, to make sense of it at the moment because of the sheer chaos of everything that's going on. And when we look at it from our personality level, from our everyday life level, which is understandable um, relative to, you know, how attached we are to certain things, lifestyles, money, you know, whatever it is, um, it's, it's tough to, to sort of detach from all of that and find the higher meaning and order in this chaos at the moment, right? And so this is what this full moon is really going to be highlighting and activating on a collective level, especially because of transiting Neptune squaring the nodes, which is largely connected to Gemini, you know, facts, truth, personal opinions. What, it, what is actually a fact of information and what is just a personal opinion, right? And, and, and in the midst of all of that, the absolute overload of data, of information that's being spewed out on every single level. And it's like, well, what, what do we believe? This is the, the Neptune squaring these nodes is bringing up that confusion because it's Neptune. And the truth of Neptune cannot be understood or seen in its entirety through form. So we, we just, we kind of get these little glimpses and we have to try to create some order with that. We have to intuit truth, actually. Truth is not going to be understood from the left linear brain, nor is it going to be understood when we are just projecting outside of ourselves into what appears as this third dimension reality. So with Sagittarius, the node being in Sagittarius squaring Neptune, it's, it's bringing all this up for us as well. It's, it's kind of like we're, we are receiving the messages, the information, the um, overload of data, North Node in Gemini, and the South Node in Sag is, is trying to find its way through the truth of the matter of all things, right? It's see, Sag has the ability to see the bigger picture, right? And so Pisces is the one that that really enables us to stand um, or to wholly intuit certain aspects of truth. We can't bring it all in at once. It, it's just not possible from the human level. So this full moon is you know, it's really stirring up these sorts of um, uncertainties, insecurities, uh, confusion, what's, what's the truth, what's real, what's fabricated, you know, uh, who's lying, who's, you know, what, what, what do I really take from this? What do I take from that? And in, in all honesty, I think if we were to constantly focus on what's appearing externally at the moment, from the consensus mainstream reality from our left brain linear mind the only thing we're going to discover is that we're lost so the full moon highlights the necessity for an old reality to be completed because pisces is the last sign in the zodiac right it's at the end of the wheel so it's pointing to something closing right? A closure of some sort, things ending, things culminating and completing, coming to an end. And it couldn't be more literal when we, when we look at the state of the world at the moment, whilst there are many um, 
many chaotic things going on, many disturbances, many uncertainties and so forth, it is clear to some extent that the way we thought life was will no longer be moving forward. And that is, I think that that is a stark reality for pretty much every country on the planet. I mean, I can't say that for sure, that I know that for a fact that it is that for every country, but it makes sense to me that it will be because this evolution, which is pointing to the collective evolution and the earth's evolution is not just going to choose, you know, one area of the earth. It's, it's about the entirety, right? Everything. So, you know, some places, some countries will experience that more intensely, more rapidly um, in It'll be more focused in very specific areas and in other countries it'll be, you know, other areas, other reasons, different, um, different ways of seeing things and so forth. But the bottom line being that we are stepping into a new paradigm and the old paradigm that we've identified with our whole lives is, is dying, it's dead, it's finished, it's completing. And I'll show you the chart in a minute this full moon is actually conjunct the goddess Ceres. And Ceres is a very profound goddess and asteroid in the natal chart and through transits from what I can see as well, for sure. She's, she's, one, of the, um, she's one of the asteroids that when you're working with her material, what what she brings forth is undeniable and it's it's not um it's not obscure it's not difficult to identify series is series her daughter was abducted into the underworld she went through a process of deep grief and mourning um deep loss relative to the loss of her daughter she's the result of the seasons that we experience on earth today the the fundamental core meaning of series is about the experience of loss and grief in life as we experience it in many different ways throughout the journey of our life when you end a, a relationship there's a sense of loss there's you have to grieve that process right when you end one job and go into another job even though that may be a pleasant, happy kind of choice, decision, you're happy about it, you've, you've chosen that, you still have to mourn and grieve, you know, the ending. And, and that's what Ceres brings, brings up to us. So Ceres can jump the full moon in Pisces. And I said this uh, earlier in the year, I think I said this probably at the beginning of the year in one of my videos, I can't remember which one, <clears throat> but I said very specifically that transiting Ceres in the sign of Pisces is really pointing to the the loss of the reality that we uh, have been attached to. So Ceres being conjunct this full moon is is just bringing that into further amplification at this current point in time, because when this pandemic thing started which was, you know, early Feb, March, whatever it was, um, no one at that time thought to themselves that this would be going until the end of the year. Personally, I did. If I'm going to be honest, I did. I, the, the first instinctive feeling that came to me when this started was there's no way this thing is going to go away in like a month or two or three. You know, where it's going to be pretty intense and horrific till the end of the year at least and when i say the end of the year that doesn't mean that we go back to normal life at the end of 2020 we won't go back to normal life that's the whole point and that's the whole point to this full moon in pisces it's, it's highlighting that it's showing us series is there it's a sense of loss of the reality that we've been attached to and the vast majority of people on the planet which i define as the consensus reality uh really really struggling to let go of the way they've lived their lives thus far everyone's trying to sort of hang on to what was 
and I can completely understand it. That's a, that's a natural human reaction. It's, it's not a judgment when I, when I identify that. It's just an observation, right, relative to viewing the world from a model of 80% of human beings operate in a consensus reality, 15 or so percent operate in an individuated reality, and about 5 or 3 to 5% operate in a spiritualized um, evolutionary path reality, right? So what we're seeing at the moment on a number of different levels is the, it's the, it's the collective crisis that's going on and through the personality it's been experienced as this um we have to let go of the life we thought we were living and it's a bit like growing pains in a way you know but it's it's even bigger than that really because this is this is a huge transition the world is not going to be the same after this. I think, I think most people now, wherever they're operating from, are truly starting to, to recognise that, you know. So anyway, in, in the larger cycles and bigger scheme of things, it's, it's not going to be as bad as it feels or appears right now. But that's, that, those are conversations for down the track. For, for, the, for the moment, relative to the full moon, the things to consider are that, <clears throat> pardon me, think about the new moon in Pisces earlier this year. Where was that in your chart? That can show you certain things that started for you at that time, which are either coming to a close right now um, or are being shown to you the, the, the fruits and, and the rewards or, or the labours, uh, you know, to what you've been doing since February until now, some of that will uh, potentially really be very clear for you. So it's a process of true awareness, right? Being able to see clearly so you can, you can make a different choice. You can change your mind. You can change the direction. You can complete something or you can be um, truly... Uh, feeling a sense of culmination at reaching a certain point with certain things you started because the full moon is like, it's, um, it's like literally shining. You, you are shining in, in everything that you've been, you know, sort of assimilating and, and creating in your life as it were. So it, it, it's a time to rejoice in a way as well, but it just depends, you know, on the individual and what's going on. Now, I really love the Sabian symbol, by the way, for, um, <clears throat> uh, the full moon is at 10 degrees of um, Pisces, right? At about 10 degrees and 20 minutes, something like that. I'll show you the chart in a minute. But so the Sabian symbol that we go to is a subsequent degree, right? And the book that I use for Sabian symbols is this one I've, I've shown you guys this before, Dane Rudyard. Um, I really like this Sabian symbol book. It's uh, it's really powerful. Okay, so I think this Sabian symbol is quite, um, I'll just wait for this emergency thing to go past. Okay, here's 11 degrees of Pisces, which is uh, the degree for the full moon, right? Men traveling a narrow path seeking illumination. So that's the heading. The key note is the capacity inherent in every individual to seek at whatever cost entrance to a transcendent realm of reality. This refers to the ancient and eternal symbol of the path of discipleship. The greatness of man is that he can always be greater <clears throat> and the belief deeply rooted in men's inner nature that if he fulfills the necessary conditions, he can find elder brothers who have already attained a higher level of consciousness and will transfer their attainment and light to him. The path is always open to the pure in heart 
the mentally aware, the conqueror of emotions, and the spiritually self-mobilized. So you can interpret that in a number of different ways. It's, it just comes down to whether that speaks to you, how you resonate with that personally. But I think what we're really looking at there is very similar to what I've been discussing. It, it does feel like we're walking a narrow path at the moment because of the severity of restrictions, which is all Saturn in Capricorn. Pallas Athena in Capricorn has been the masks. She's about to go direct. So there's going to be um, either new information or new direction relative to mask wearing uh, in the coming weeks. And so the, the, the narrow path is the constraint, you know, the level of constraint that we feel some feel it more than others. Some actually love this uh, absolute putting everything to a stop. That I still I know people in my life who um, are not bothered by this at all. <laughs> so you know, people do have a different uh, response and reaction depending on their own evolutionary path, their own understanding, their own needs, and so forth. Right. Um, but nevertheless, I think for the majority, there's a sense of this narrow path because of the restrictions and limitations. But ultimately, through this full moon, we can have a sense of illumination, which will require to surrender, surrender perhaps the reality that you've been attached to. <laughs> it's not easy to do, I know. But Pisces is all about surrender, letting go, letting go of the control. And by our very nature in form as personalities and egos, the very thing we want to do is the complete opposite to that, which is take control. And the control uh, component really does tie into our sense of personal sovereignty and freedom as well to a very large degree. And... Mars in Aries at the moment is stirring that up quite a lot. You know, here in Australia, they've proposed a, um, a, a what's it called? A, a protest on the 5th of September, which is a day before Mars goes retrograde. So I find that really fascinating, just collectively here in Australia, how the people in Victoria, I should say, I'm sorry, in Victoria, not in the whole of Australia, but in the state of Victoria, this is going on. Um, so the state of Victoria, the, the, the consensus sort of reality, if you like, that the consciousness of the people here have tuned into that Mars in Aries, which is about, I want my freedom back. I want my sovereignty back. Fuck this control bullshit. I've had enough. Sorry for the language. <laughs> Um, and so it's, it's stirring up quite a lot. Now, the other component to this sort of activity, it's connected to the Mars in Aries, but it's also connected to Uranus, right? And Uranus um, going retrograde is that sense of um, at, a, at, a, at a more conscious sort of level, it is about being able to find that freedom within oneself. And so when Uranus is moving direct, we're, we're sort of, we're projecting our, our freedom out there. So, I mean, you can even say that like people, for example, who have Uranus uh, retrograde in their birth chart natally, right? Just, just to give you a, an example, a Uranus retrograde individual, not everyone, but generally speaking, will typically be not be the sort of person who will feel compelled to engage in protests, for example. They may have a similar sort of view relative to the protesters and, and advocate for what those protesters stand for, but they don't have the need to actively, physically participate in those sorts of um, activities, right? Whereas 
person who's got um, Uranus direct is, is more inclined to bring that Uranus energy out there physically and do something with it out there, right? So the people who are rebels, um, sorry, just something popped up on my screen there. Um, so the people who are rebels on that, literally on, on the active dynamic external level who, who need to take action towards things, you know, in um, activist type situations, that, that's a Uranus direct uh, experience, right? Natally as well. So, um, yeah, I was just saying about Victoria, for instance, you know, tuning into this energy of, because the, the day that the protest is supposed to be going ahead is Mars will be just minutes away from the degree that it will be on when it goes retrograde. And when a planet goes retrograde, that particular degree, whatever degree it is, it's always a very, very important degree to take note of and to monitor and to watch because the planet that goes retrograde, for instance, is, is going to, you know, it's obviously going to go retrograde, which is appearing to be moving backwards. So it's going to eventually catch up to that degree again, right? And it might do it a couple of times. So there's something very important about the specific degree that a planet goes retrograde on. That's the case for any planet, actually. Um, so let me just um, bring up the chart so that I can uh, prompt my my mind. <laughs> um, did I share my screen then? I don't think I did. Okay, let me just share my screen. So this chart is drawn for Melbourne, as always, you know, unless you're in Melbourne, Australia, don't worry about the location of things. Um, the location of things changes based on your position on the earth plane, obviously. So the, the thing that we are looking at here is the full moon, right? The sun opposite the moon in Pisces. Now you can see there's Ceres, right? In Pisces, like I said, Ceres conjunct the full moon in Pisces is in very simple translation. It's a grieving and a loss over certain dreams that we, we had, right? Or we could say, a loss or a grieving over the reality that we projected. This is what it's really going to bring up. That can then be very uh, personalized and relate to someone's um, personal circumstances. It could be about relationships. It could be about a number of different things. Um, we are talking about the sun and the moon, which is the king and the queen, the feminine and the masculine, um, <laughs> mirroring back to each other certain aspects of relating relationship that's what a full moon symbolizes relative to connecting to libra full moon is the energy of libra that's what it is so it's it's the having some if you have someone stand directly opposite you you can see them 100 percent clearly that's a full moon experience that's a libran experience because you are looking at another person you are connecting sharing engaging conversing whereas when someone's standing next to you that's a conjunction you can't see them you can get a sense from your peripheral vision but you can't see them exactly as you can when someone's opposite you so that's the vast difference between a conjunction and an opposition so here we have two luminaries the two lights sun moon king queen feminine masculine opposing each other bringing to light matters that are imbalanced matters that are balanced matters in relationships matters in within our own self relative to our own inner feminine and masculine which we all have but the undertone to all of this is about virgo and pisces which is about chaos and order it's about dreams versus the practical level of reality virgo and of course, we have this uh, further undertone of the Virgo season, which we started a few days ago. It started when Mercury first ingressed into Virgo, then the sun ingressed into Virgo. So our, our consciousness at the moment from a collective level is going through a period of having to have to adjust things in our life. Virgo is about adjusting stuff. It's about 
working out what works, what doesn't work, discarding what doesn't, trying something new, trying a new technique, trying a new routine, trying a new diet, trying to work on yourself, trying to improve on the quality of your health, health, wealth, being, right? This is what Virgo takes us through. So in the midst of this, before we get really into the Virgo season, which we've started, but this full moon is bringing up in our so-called reality what is no longer a reality and no, no longer real in terms of what we previously thought or had attached ourselves to. And as I said, that, that includes certain dreams, dreams we had. I'm getting a bit warm. I've got a hot, waddle, hot, <laughs> a hot bottle behind me. Um, So, uh, Ceres Moon, some sense of loss there. Neptune is about nine and a half, almost, yeah, about nine and a half degrees away from the full moon. So it would be considered fairly wide in traditional orbs, but in evolutionary terms, this orb is allowed. So you can just, you can work with what, what you feel works and, and what you've, seen works as well it's not always just about what we feel because we have to be objective when it comes to astrology not just uh, what we feel but in my opinion when a planet um uh, like this which in this case neptune rules pisces right so the moon is in neptune's sign right and it's a full moon which is a full moon is it's fully charged it's a fully charged body of energy you know, it's, it's, it's intense, it's electrifying, it's fully charged, it's fully bloomed and grown. So you've got a full moon with its ruling planet nine and a half degrees away. It's, it's there. It's there within the vicinity of her vibration, the lunar goddess, the moon, you know, her ruler right there. So again, this is just highlighting and amplifying the, the reality that we see before us, which is totally unclear neptune nothing is clear when it comes the only thing that's clear with neptune is that everything is unclear and so if we can't work with that the, the only way to work with that is to have faith and to be able to surrender to what you can't actually control because that's what pisces and neptune steps into that's what it asks us to do to let go of wanting to control and to go into what what may feel like nothingness, as it were, but it's actually everything, because everything is contained in Pisces and Neptune, everything. But it doesn't have the form and the structure, right? So we we have it's it's virtually impossible to to describe in words. You you can't. It's it's a state that you have to feel and experience in body. So Pisces asks us to embody the process of surrendering and letting go and trusting and having faith. <laughs> so this is what's going to come up with the full moon. And there will be a lot of disappointments for a lot of people, for sure. Because the reality that they were living or thought they were living or thought they were creating is disintegrating and disappearing and dissolving. And that's happening collectively and that's happening personally for each of us in different ways, some more than others. Neptune, Pisces, dissolves all form, all boundaries. So, yeah, it's, um, it's an interesting full moon that's coming up. Uh, just a couple of other points about Neptune and the nodes. So when a planet is squaring, a transiting planet is squaring the transiting nodes, it's always an opportunity for integration, you know, for us to be able to integrate towards our own evolutionary path, wherever we are with that at any given time. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a way of discovering or expanding our own self as well and discovering new things about ourselves because we are that's what evolution means that we are always growing 
nothing is static. The only reason this chart appears static is because we have taken a snapshot. You know, a second later, everything that you see in that chart is just continuously moving at its own pace relative to its speed and so forth. And even though in this dense reality, a lot of things appear to either stand still or move incredibly slowly, which some things are, still everything is constantly in motion. That's what life is. It's motion, movement, frequency, energy. Everything is changing and moving, everything. But as human beings, we become very attached and we find it hard to let go, right? It's just how it is. So, as I said, the transiting Neptune squaring the nodes can be, it, this is a very confusing time for the, for the whole planet, right? And this is going to be active until January, 2021. We've got quite a few months of this, quite a few months. So, you know, I mean, and the way this is playing out, uh, I'm sure this is happening where you guys are to an extent as well. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't, I try not to watch the news, but I do sometimes just watch the headlines, just, just the first minute, just to see what, what they crap on about. Right. Um, and just to kind of keep myself informed, you know, on the consensus sort of level, right. Uh, relative to how that may or may not be useful is another question. Right. Um, but, you know, the, the information that's given every single day changes from one day to the next. The, the, the whole, every, all the information that's been given about COVID or the masks or um, the economy or whatever changes every single day from our so-called leaders. And the reason for that is because, well, a large part of the reason is that they don't know themselves what the fuck is going on with this COVID thing. No one knows. That's the truth. You can accept that or you cannot. It's entirely up to you. Um, the uncertainty is coming through the confusion and uncertainty is because of this Neptune. So no one really knows exactly how to deal with it. And they're, they're just apparently trying to put in, you know, the appropriate measures in order to deal with it as best they can and so forth. Now, I know there's a diverse uh, range of perspectives on that and that's that's okay, but I'm not here to discuss that really. I'm just merely pointing to the astrological symbolism, right, relative to how it's being projected and experienced at the moment. So transiting Neptune's where the nodes, you know, we're talking about Sag Gemini, which is left brain, right brain. Personal opinion, intuition. Truth, data, information. So all this is being challenged within ourselves at the moment. So we have to, we have to come to some kind of um, ability within ourselves, literally on, on a daily basis now because of just the, the nature of how reality appears and how, how it's constantly changing. We, we have to find a way to, to connect to our own truth within us because the bottom line is that you can't control what's happening out there. I can't control what's happening out there, but we can have an influence, a relationship, a more broad view and understanding from within. We have to go into that space though. Uh, so, you know, so Gemini is just classifies, you know, all, all, all things, uh, that come through the left brain, right? It's mindsets, personal opinions, you know, stuff like that. Um, whereas Sag, which is the polarity, it, it's what gives meaning to the data and information. It's ultimately trying to express and find truth and meaning. That's what Sag is doing. So we're just we're caught up at the moment between those two worlds of what we thought was truth, um, what we think might be truth, and what we don't know about the truth. This is this is the the web, the etheric web of what we are 
transitioning through at the moment. And don't forget that none of us have all the answers to everything. None of us. And so there's so much that we actually do not know. Regardless of how much we work with astrology and are able to draw correlations and observations and so on and so forth, there's, there's a mysterious element of life that can never be truly known or understood here in the physical plane. And anyone who claims otherwise, I don't believe is being truly honest. No one knows everything. Um, so yeah, just really uh, tuning into our intuition, trying to perceive a level of truth through that, which Sag takes us to Pisces. Sag is the, the seeking of truth and meaning, and Pisces is the truth. So this full moon, you know, it, it's just amplifying all these different components. Um, okay. One, one thing that I think, uh, is, uh, important and also helpful relative to the month of September specifically Uh, actually, just before I go there, I, I just wanted to say there's there's a guy called Rupert, um, his name Rupert Spira, right, uh, on YouTube. And uh, he talks a lot about the nature of reality, dreams, karma, death, you know, <laughs> all that sort of stuff. He's worth checking out if you're interested in that kind of material, um, understanding the nature of consciousness. So he doesn't use astrology, but I can, he's a Pisces, <laughs> no surprise. Um, uh, the way he speaks with what he teaches, it's it's all Neptune, Pisces, and some Virgo there as well. But anyway, it's, it's a good source of um, information at a, at a level that has quite a bit of depth and substance that might just give um a bit of meaning to certain things for you just check him out especially with a full moon in pisces coming up and just remember that with pisces and neptune things need to dissolve because the dissolving of the form is also part of the process of what reunites us with the divine so you know, we, the, the form changes all the time, right? That's what evolution is about. Um, but the, the less attachment we have to form and identification we have to form, the more we can feel free and truly unified with love which doesn't have form which is source creation to all things right and so that's again this full moon brings these things up as well how willing are you to let go of you know what everything you're trying to control and step into surrender you know that's just i just used one sentence there but how able are you to actually do that that's the question um, and just, uh, just a couple of comments about the, the sun in, uh, Virgo, which forms a trine to Uranus in Taurus, right? So this is during the full moon. Uh, so that's quite a nice supportive, um, element there that we've got because Uranus in Taurus has destabilized the entire earth. <laughs> um, land, uh, housing, you know, uh, property, the market on that level, people losing their homes. It, it, you know, it's, it's pretty incredible what's uh, going on. And clearly we've got that for another six years or so, right? While Uranus is completing 
his journey through Aquarius. But anyway, in the short term, relative to this full moon, Sun trying Uranus, that's, I mean, quite simply put, you know, we're talking about Virgo from the point of view of what am I trying to get right in my life? What, what am I trying to really, um, really look at very honestly at the moment and, and sort of address what's not working? And Uranus, which is about truth as well, liberation, freedom, individuation, waking up, awakening, is, is the body that's forming a trine to the sun. So there's, there's some support there by Uranus. He's, he's giving some support to the moon in Virgo relative to, you know, working out what the, what's working and what's not working for you. What, what do I need to try differently? How, how am I going to try it differently? And so the Uranus energy offers a sense of, um, well, it can be flashes of insight that come through for one because Uranus is flashes of insight. So uh, new material can be supported through what you're actually, how you're trying to figure things out relative to what's working, what's not working, right? And then later on in the month, um, when the moon gets uh, into Taurus, we're going to have this earth grand trine, you know, with the sun, the moon and Uranus. So that's just an added layer to what I just said now, um, but bringing the moon into it, which is very much about home life, security, one's own self-image, um, personal emotional body, personal emotional state, feeling, reactions, responses, and so forth. So there's a, a beautiful harmony happening between the sun and the moon, the king and the queen, feminine and masculine, and Uranus, right? Bring the, the body of insight and sudden breakthroughs, sudden awakening, flashes of insight, right? All in earth. Earth is got to do with the earthly things, doesn't it? It's got to do with where we live, how we live, um, our body, uh, how we create, our routines, our rhythms, cycles. You know, Virgo is intricately connected to the bodily rhythms and cycles that have to do with nature, the natural circadian rhythms in the body, the, the central nervous system that dictates so much of what's going on. This is all Virgo business. So there's there's some beautiful harmony and support um, relative to those things on, on how we can further integrate and the things that we may want to work on in our own personal life in practical ways, in practical ways where things get addressed, looked at, and it works. It works because we're addressing it in a realistic, practical way with the insight of Uranus, which is being able to think outside of the little box, to think outside the usual ways of doing things and bring in some foresight, some visions that are beyond what you ever thought you would ever consider or do or work with. That's how I see this, which is pretty great, actually. Um, and, you know, naturally, as the month progresses, um, the, the sun in Virgo is going to form a trine to Jupiter, Pluto and Saturn as well. And that's, that's a really nice, harmonious, supportive aspect to it. And we need that. We need this earth energy, in other words, can be a way of trying to stabilise some aspects in our life that have just been, you know, thrown to the wind where there's just been chaos. So this, this earth energy can bring through the ability to ground some things in ourself and in our life, right, which is a huge support. And we, I dare say most of us really need that at the moment with everything that's been going on. So that's, you know, that's pretty good. Um, but full moon, yeah, um, disillusionment, dreams come crashing, some dreams are realized, new realities are realized, uh, acceptance, forgiveness, connecting further to divine source creation to all things, surrendering, letting go and trusting. That Those are just words, but when you step into and embody what those words mean, it becomes an experience which becomes your life. So I'm going to leave it there uh, because I can keep talking and I've got lots of um, work to do.
just one other thing that I uh, didn't mention about Pisces. Because Pisces is what we could say connects to an altered state of consciousness, which is a, you know, an altered sort of version of reality, if you like. It's the sign that is more inclined to escape the present and the current reality. So, you know, this full moon, um, for some people, will, will, could just be uh, escaping out of the, <laughs> the apparent present reality, you know. Um, there can be matters where victim type situations arise, uh, where you want to rescue somebody, you know, where you want to save somebody. Um, it's a very sensitive full moon, very, very emotional, very, very sensitive, um, can bring up a lot of sadness, especially if there is sadness from the past connecting to certain things you've been through. It could be a loss of someone you love deeply. So it's a very, it's a very, very sensitive moon is what I'm trying to get at, right? And so just keep that in mind as well, you know, um, through those days leading up to the full moon and even post the full moon, post the exact date of the full moon because the full moon phase lasts for about three days, right? So uh, three and a half days. So, you know, we're talking about around about a four-day period where this energy of the full moon in Pisces is really amplified. Neptune is in Pisces right there with it, squaring the nodes. You know, there's a lot going on. Ceres conjunct the full moon. So just be really mindful of self-love, self-care, self-nurture. Um, and, you know, some. I mean, through this can come new dreams, new realities. But, of course, it's about surrendering the old ones, as I said before. But it can bring up a lot of... Um, disappointment and sadness and hurt and pain. So we just need to be aware of that. I'm saying that because you might be somebody at the moment who's going through a really painful transition in your life and you're being asked to surrender that the reality you've been holding on to, this is, this is the time where this is going to become, it's going to be in your face as it were. That that sigh was about certain people that I know in my life who are facing that at the moment. Mm. Okay, guys, um, see you all very soon. Thanks so much for listening and I hope that my um, offerings are useful. And, uh, yeah, as always, feel free to leave comments, questions below, communicate with each other. See you guys very soon. Much love and happy uh, full moon. Bye.